Good afternoon, everybody. My name is Lorenzo. I am the CEO of Creative Zone. Welcome to this uh, special webinar dedicated to setting up uh, your business in Saudi Arabia. As many of you already know, uh, Creative Zone is the largest business setup company here in the UAE. And in the last eight months to 10 months, we started offering Saudi setups to our clients and to people from the outside world that were interested in also taking the advantage and the opportunity of setting up their business in Saudi Arabia. The reasons are quite um, are, um, obvious. Saudi Arabia is the biggest uh, consumer market in the region and it's, it has a, a, a list of very exciting projects that we're gonna be discussing uh, together with, with you all. Uh, we have in the call Ahmed uh, al Kaktani, who is our operations manager in our operation there in Saudi Arabia, in our office in Saudi Arabia. We recently set up an office there and Ahmed is leading our operation side of things. We have Callum, uh, who is a set business setup advisor here in our Dubai office. And he's uh, in full brief and understanding and his capacity of advising clients on uh, business setup solutions in Saudi Arabia. And Alistair Payne, who is our business setup manager that also runs a team of about eight, nine people in, in our business setup advisory team. And he's an expert on Saudi, Saudi Arabia setups. So Ahmed, Callum, Alistair, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you. Thank, thank you for the opportunity. Thanks for the so, introduction. I see about 100 people connected. Uh, let, let's get started. So maybe Alistair, I, I can get started with you. Tell us a little bit about why Saudi. What is it that from our eyes uh, or side of things, we are recommending people that they should be considering Saudi Arabia as a place for them to set up a company? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, thank you. And good afternoon to, to everyone joining in. Thank you for the introduction, Lorenzo. Yes, why Saudi Arabia? I think Saudi Arabia is, is the largest economy here in the Middle East. Um, it has a population of just over 34 million. Um, it's got an average age of, of just over 31. So it, it's got a very young population as well. Why Saudi Arabia? They are heavily investing in their development and growth part of Vision 2030 is to diversify away from what has been a oil dependent economy. And the government plan to do this by investing in several key areas, such as healthcare, um, financial services, transportation. They're looking at scaling up industrial manufacturing, um, energy, environmental services as well. Um, it, it's also a sector they're looking at. So the government are very heavily investing and looking for private companies to come into the kingdom to help them with this expansion. I'm sure everyone would have seen the local um, news reports came out at the start of the year that if you want to now work with the Saudi government, you need to be locally registered and have your local headquarters in the kingdom as well. So there's a lot of opportunity to, to win government business. Obviously, the private sector there is, is growing as well. So all in all, that, that makes into a very exciting um, place to invest and do business. We see all the time reforms in Saudi Arabia socially. Um, we, we've seen women can now drive. We're seeing tourism increase as well. We've seen Saudi Arabia trying to host large scale sporting events. The Formula One championships have been there. They almost hosted the heavyweight championship of the world between Nancy Joshua and Tyson Fury. So major events are, are going to the kingdom as well. So it will soon be one of the, the hottest tourist destinations as well in the Middle East. So all in all, it, make, it makes it into sort of very exciting as we build up towards 2030. Um, and now really is the best time to get in there and take advantage of this. And I, I, I think I can, I can add to this description is that, that Dubai has played traditionally a, a bit of being the center. Now Dubai has become of a launch pad of many of the companies that are already operating in, in Dubai or in the UAE are looking into op opening branches or setting up in Saudi Arabia, right? This is a bit of what you've been seeing over the last uh, year or so. Yeah, absolutely. We, we've seen a huge number of our, our, our clients who have been successfully established in Dubai for the last number of years, looking at opening branches, subsidiaries um, in the kingdom to take advantage of this of this government spending and and the overall um, yeah the overall sort of buoyancy of, of the Saudi economy. So many of our existing clients have have utilised our services in Saudi Arabia, um, and yeah, we we look forward to helping many more. 
Excellent. Maybe at this time, I would like to remind everybody to feel free to put your questions on the Q&A box or on the chat uh, section of, of, of this app, of the Zoom call. I'll be reading questions from different parts of, of, of both sections. And tell us a little bit, where are you connecting from? Are you in the UAE? Are you in Saudi Arabia? Are you in other countries around the world? Are you an existing creative zone client? Do you already own a company and you're looking to set up a business in Saudi Arabia? Tell us a little bit about who you are and the questions that you have, and we will be raising them as we go along in today's session. Ahmed, what can you add to this initial introduction that Alistair has done in terms of Saudi? And you are from Saudi Arabia, you are sitting there. Tell us a bit what, what is being lived over there at the moment. Um, hello, everybody. I would like to welcome everybody to uh, our session. Um, as Alistair, I have mentioned that uh, how the economy is booming in Saudi Arabia and how we, how everybody is looking to invest and uh, bring their businesses to Saudi Arabia, considering the, the way that the Vision 2030 is going and heading uh, to not be only uh, dependent on uh, petroleum and oil. So uh, I would like to add that uh, a lot of a lot of uh, opportunities is uh, coming up, uh, a lot of activities that is is uh, needing some more investment in it, uh, some more uh, companies uh, to come into Saudi Arabia. That uh, one of them is entertainment and tourism, which is a really huge activity that is uh, is going to be a big thing, especially starting now with all the projects that Saudi Arabia is going to. One of them is like Gdia, the entertainment uh, uh, almost city, uh, which is a very huge uh, project that Saudi Arabia has, uh, has, uh, has taken on right now. Um, Saudi Arabia have made a lot of initiatives, a lot of uh, support to investors and uh, GCC uh, business uh, that wants to come into Saudi Arabia by making it a, a very easy to set up the business there uh, in a very uh, simple processes that, uh, that will uh, make the business start uh, very easy. A lot of support, financial support, fiscal support, and also uh, employment support. A lot of the ministries are giving a lot of initiatives, a lot of uh, programs that will help them in uh, understanding how the business will go in Saudi Arabia. And, uh, and making the government process when it was like maybe I would say 10 years ago uh, very hard to understand it now it is always uh, it is very easy to understand very easy to get done uh, in the process the market is needing a lot of uh, businesses to come in it is very booming right now and um, I see I mean in the short time that I worked in and uh, in, uh, with the uh, with looking at the businesses coming here into Saudi Arabia, there is a lot of a lot of attraction towards it. So, I would say I would say it's a great time now, especially like uh, Lister mentioned that the 2024 uh, vision to have all uh, major companies that are uh, having contracts with the government and with the country to have their uh, uh, headquarters in Saudi Arabia. It is the perfect time to start uh, considering that Saudi Arabia to be the next uh, business setup for you. For the purpose of the people that are watching this webinar right now, I can see in the list people are writing the type of entities that they're involved. We have Hallet, the House of Scandinavian Finishing Materials. There is another trading company. Um, what kind of industries, what kind of sectors are you seeing most activity from the foreigners that are coming to set up? And tell us a little bit more about the projects that are being developed, the, the Neom City, the Red Sea project, as well as this entertainment city that you were talking about. I want people to get a sense of the type of industries that are being required to, and, and there are opportunities in Saudi Arabia for. Um, a lot of activities is uh, one of them, uh, the most attractive one is uh, information technology. And like I said, the entertainment and uh, tourism, it's uh, one of the big, big things that uh, Saudi Arabia is mostly focused to, to attract uh, investors to it. Uh, financial uh, financial uh, services uh, and uh, mining and natural resources. That's one of the huge ones. And the Saudi Arabia may have made an initiatives to uh, incentives to actually for um, investors that interested 
to uh, go into the industrial uh, sectors with um, a lot of exemption in uh, custom duties, a lot of uh, exemption in tax and uh, sales uh, uh, sales taxes. Uh, so uh, uh, the other the other activities that are very uh, important now are like transportation and logistics too, and in the industrial manufacturers, like I've said, and the healthcare too. That's one of the big uh, activities that Saudi Arabia is uh, focusing on to improve and uh, make the health sectors as uh, more uh, more well well done to for all types of uh, people. Excellent. I am getting a lot of very good comments from some of the uh, attendees. Uh, Johannes is saying we are Brad's trading enterprises, a Namibia-based company work, working towards solar energy. Uh, Nelly is talking about a water waste management company that they're based in Ras Algema and is also considering of coming to Saudi Arabia. Um, Callum, you've been advising clients on setting up options. Again, let's stay on this topic of the type of activities. What kind of activities you've been sort of uh, advising uh, our clients? What kind of companies they've been setting up in Saudi Arabia? Yeah, absolutely. Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you, Lorenzo. Um, I mean, as my colleague Alastair and Ahmed have both mentioned, it's an absolute booming market at the moment in Saudi Arabia. We're having a huge amount of interest from existing clients, new clients who are looking to set up in Saudi Arabia. There's a lot of different activities. They've got a wide, a wide range of activities to select from, from the Isaac list in Saudi Arabia, ranging from trading activities, service-based activities, consultancies, media. So there's a, there's a huge list of activities that you can set up as a foreign expatriate. And there's many government incentives which are trying to initiate healthcare, real estate, infrastructure, all these type of industries. So they're really, really pushing to get away from the oil industries to really go into the private sectors and huge investments to be made for foreign expatriates. Excellent. Let, maybe let's touch upon this topic of the incentives. I think I have a slide here that uh, my team prepared. Uh, Callum, would you have a bit of a list and then I'll pass on to the rest of the guys. Can we go deeper on the type of incentives? Are we to talking about tax deductions for the first few years? Uh, what can we list as, as incentives? And then Alistair, I'll pass on to you with the same question. Yes, so the, the whole government in Saudi Arabia are really pushing towards this 2030 vision where they're trying to make Saudi Arabia economy in the top 15 economies in the world. I think currently they're ranked around about 18th um, gross domestic product wise. But in terms of the initiatives, they're, they're really trying to attract foreign investment in particular industries. So they're really pushing for healthcare, events, infrastructure, um, yeah, several different industries, energy, and the fact for a foreign expatriate to register in Saudi Arabia, you need to register through Ministry of Investment of Saudi Arabia or MISA. This was formerly known as SAGIA. You may have heard of SAGIA previously, but they're, they're allowing and they're really, really trying to attract lots of investments. So the initiatives are lower tax rates, especially comparing to perhaps some of the European countries, there'll be 20% taxation rates um, on the, the corporate tax. Personal income, there's no taxation on personal income at all. Um, so yeah, there's lots of initiatives that the government are pushing for the investments. I can see here custom duties exemptions for the first few years of operation, no export duties within 17 countries. Alistair, what other incentives can we list? Yeah, definitely. I think what uh, everything Callum said is, is valid and correct. They're also developing uh, free zones, but they call them special economic zones. We've seen um, King Abdullah Economic City currently under construction. Um, any company registered there will be exempt from the current corporation tax rate for expatriates, which is 20%. We've also seen um, a new logistics free zone located at Riyadh Airport, currently under, um, under construction. That's called Integrated Logistics Bonded Zone. That will be focused mainly on, on shipping companies. Again, there will be import um, exemption on import and export duties as well as corporation tax. We've also heard from the Saudi government that VAT, which was recently increased to 15%, will be lowered back down to 5% in the next five years. Um, and as Callum's correctly said, there is still an exemption and 
there's still no personal income tax. And again, recently, the Saudi authorities have confirmed that that is to stay the way. They are not looking to introduce that. So all of these things geared towards um, prosperity. They, they encourage business, they encourage investment into the kingdom. And I think once these economic zones are up and running, and they are behind, they were due to launch in, in last year, but for obvious reasons, they've been delayed. Um, I think you know we'll see many more business setup options and many more ways to enter the market, which which can only be a good thing. I keep on getting some good comments uh, from the from the audience. Andrew is saying we are a retailer with a store in both Mall of Emirates and Dubai Mall. We are an existing CZ client. Andrew, it's good to hear from you. Our headquarters are in New York. Would love to he hear about specific company setup requirements for Saudi Arabia. Does it require a 51% local sponsor? Andrew is asking. Um, uh, Alistair, maybe you can guide that on, on, on the different options. Let's go deeper now on the options. People or foreigners can set up uh, through the MISA option, giving them the possibility of being 100% owned or GCC owned nationals or GCC nationals can set up in, uh, directly to the Ministry of Economy. So uh, also, in, in, I take this opportunity, um, maybe Callum, Ahmed, and Alistair, start including your email addresses on the chat function of the, of the Zoom call so that people can, can have your, your details for reaching out and asking you questions aside of this um, uh, webinar. So maybe Alistair, let's go into the, into the different structures and the different uh, options for setting up. Yeah, absolutely. As, as I think uh, my, my colleague Callum said, any non-GCC national looking to own a company in Saudi Arabia, you must be licensed under the Ministry of Investment of Saudi Arabia, formerly known as Sargia. The local ownership laws are quite different to the UAE. Uh, nearly every activity can be 100% owned by expatriates. There are a handful of activity which do require 25% Saudi ownership or even 100%, but it really is a small number of activities in very specialized fields. But your general sort of trading service-based companies can be 100% owned by expatriates under MISA. To set up under the Ministry of Investment uh, of Saudi Arabia, there are a couple of requirements one must fulfill when you're not a GCC national. Firstly, you must own another company somewhere else in the world. That can be the UAE, can also be any other country. That company must be older than one year. It should be within the same industry. And we have to get the last 12 months financial statement um, and show that to me, sir. You also have to prepare a business plan. And you will also, depending on your business activity, have to pay up the share capital of the company. And this is where it can get a little bit tricky. Under certain trading activities, there are quite high paid up share capital requirements. Um, up to 30 million rials needs to be deposited. Under some of the service activities, that is a little bit lower than 500,000 rials, um, and some other activities don't require any paid up capital as well. Um, so in a nutshell, those are the sort of main requirements to register under MISA. Just be aware that office space is mandatory on all types of setup in Saudi. We need to show something. We're working with uh, plenty of providers that can assist here. We will be opening our own business center in the middle of Riyadh, uh, just like we have here in downtown Dubai. So office options are, are something that we can cater to. Saudiization requirements uh, are also there. Saudiization is a very real and prevalent thing, which I'm sure we're gonna come on to in a bit more detail. But hiring a Saudi national is mandatory pretty much for any company looking to hire non-Saudi nationals. Um, so that in a nutshell we, is what would be required to set up under MISA. The other option, and anyone attending who is a UAE national or another GCC national, the good news is you can set up the company uh, pretty straightforward. Uh, a lot of those requirements we've just mentioned there do not exist for GCC nationals. Um, you don't need to uh, obviously give any percentage ownership away. You don't need to show that you own another company worldwide. And the paid up share capital requirements under a GCC national company or GCC national owned company are also not there. So I'm sure we have a couple of UAE nationals uh, in attendance today. The good news is setting up in Saudi is very straightforward for you. UAE nationals are treated the same as Saudi nationals when it comes to company setup. So those really are your two main setup options. MISA, GCC national owned. As we sort of touched on, there are special economic zones which are due to open later this year and into next year. That will then provide a sort of third business setup option. Um, and yeah, uh, any other questions my, my uh, 
my emails in the chat box. I'll be happy to answer any more specifics. Thanks. Excellent. And maybe I will ask our tech team to include our landing page uh, for those that would like to learn more information and to receive the, directly the presentations that show the, the list of documents, the requirements and the steps for setting up uh, in Saudi with these two options. So if our tech team can include the landing page for everybody in the audience that would like to receive the full documentation on the steps, the, document, the, the, the processes and procedures, we're happy to send that over as well. Talk to the emails provided by the advisors here, Alistair Callum and Ahmed, and they will also be happy to uh, send back uh, to you and reply to you on, on your questions. Ahmed, since you know you are our Lex, I would say in, in our Saudi operation in the terms of reaching out to the authorities when it comes to the setups that we do, the, the, the steps, that that one has to go through for for totally being a, a setup and operating company in in Saudi. What can you tell the audience more on what are those steps? First, you start in 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 at the ministry or at MISA. What are the other sort of uh, relevant government authorities that we need to go and get approvals from and and, and, and other certificates that we might need? Great, great, wonderful. Like as uh, my uh, colleagues uh, Lister have uh, mentioned, that uh, the requirement to set up uh, the businesses for GCC and foreign uh, foreign investors, after the, after the requirements are there, what we start with is submitting the papers all to these governments. Either is it uh, if it's a GCC investor, uh, which we go through the Ministry of Commercial, uh, he will be treated just as a Saudi uh, investor. Um, there is like no capital requirement. Uh, he will be open for all uh, activities. That's the same one as is, is uh, provided to the Saudi. As for the foreign nationals, uh, we will go through uh, two options there, or, or let's say three options, which is one is with a Saudi partner or 100% foreign. If he's with Saudi partner, there is a minimum. Uh, the minimum is uh, participation of the Saudi should be just 25, no less than 25%. Um, they will require the, let's say, uh, the mandatory for, of association, the CR for the company, uh, like Alistair said, the business plan, uh, also, uh, the, also the company statements, uh, income statements for it. We will submit it after it will take approximately around one to two, uh, I'm sorry, two to three months uh, to finish the process. Once we give the license for, for the investor, to become, <clears throat> to bring his business to Saudi Arabia, we'll go to uh, issuing the CR. Uh, issuing the CR, uh, it's a process will take around uh, a week to two weeks, uh, uh, pay the fees for that, and then we'll go into the process where we set up with Ministry for Human Resources, we has set up with our business organization of uh, social insurance, and uh, we're also with the cat and taxes. Those are the main, a government sectors that must be registered with at the beginning. <clears throat> After that, we'll go to uh, just some government portals to operate your business, which is uh, like OWA, where you can uh, request uh, visas and everything. Um, Saudi Arabia required a health insurance for all workers. So if you are working under the sponsorship of a company in Saudi Arabia, if you are a Saudi or a foreigner, uh, the government required that you have a health insurance plan that to insure all workers. Because I, I think I've seen uh, a question on the on the on the box that somebody is asking about the health insurance and how it's covered. So that's one of the important things. Uh, also, um, I would say uh, for for foreigner companies, they are uh, they give them uh, visas immediately for general uh, for general. Uh, managers to come they give them also visit visas to come before even set up the business completely to come see the market uh, see what they are uh, if they are comfortable with it or not uh, we can secure that for them they call it as a as a as let's say a, a, a visiting visa for a businessman um, that's that's the most important set uh, uh, ministries that you have to set up with uh, at the beginning of setting up your business. Excellent. And, and can you guide us a little bit more on the Saudiization initiative? 
Is it the first employee of the company has to be a Saudi national? What's the other requirements going forward? Yes, for the GCC and the Saudi companies, the first has to be a Saudi for the Ministry of Human Resources to open for you to request visas, which they will give you up to four visas uh, depending on your uh, activity. Uh, the Saudization for the GCC and the Saudi companies, it's mandatory. Uh, of course, every activity has its percentage. Every activity group has its own percentage where you have to get to this percent uh, to uh, open uh, open the, the system for you to give you more, uh, more uh, visas. The more you want or required visas, the more you have to hire Saudis. Uh, you have to maintain that level. If you go under that level, of course, you will have some uh, penalties or, uh, or maybe uh, you will miss some of the activities that you can do it. Well, they will stop it. They will not stop your business. They will stop just some of the uh, things that you cannot do, like renewing an Iqama or something like that. For foreign companies that goes through the MISA, uh, they will give them at the beginning uh, a couple of visas. Uh, for uh, operating for the owners to come into the Saudi Arabia. And then there is some initiatives for training. They have to train, up, uh, I think, up to 30% or something from uh, their employees as Saudis. Uh, a lot of government, a lot of sectors in Saudi Arabia, they are cooperating with uh, companies, uh, foreign companies to train uh, Saudis at their companies. And the government, the, the, the Human Resources Fund, it, uh, it, to support those companies up to 50% of the uh, of, of salaries of those Saudis. So those, this is one of the important uh, initiatives and the taxes too. Excellent, excellent. Yeah. Maybe Kalam, there's a couple of questions here in regards to bank account openings. Sahir is asking, is there a minimum bank account balance needed? And maybe we can explain here as well, what is it that we do at Creative Zone for our clients aside of the business setup? What are the other elements that we can help in apart uh, such as this one, for example, opening bank accounts? Yeah, of course. So it, it all depends. So as, as we mentioned, there's two main options. So for foreign expatriates, they need to register through MISA. Now, depending on the activity will depend on the, the minimum paid up share capital to, to be deposited into the bank accounts. So, for example, for a trading activity, if you want 100% ownership as a foreign expatriate, then you'll be looking around about 30 million paid up share capital to have 100% ownership. This can vary depending on the structure of the company. So if you do involve some GCC nationals who have 25% shares in the company, then this would be reduced to about 20 million paid up share capital. So, yes. In terms of trading activities, there are some quite heavy requirements under MISA, um, but it, it really depends on the activity you're looking to do. For more service-based activities, um, the paid up share capital, albeit there's no statutory obligation for the paid up, in practice, it's more around about half a million paid up Saudi real deposited into the bank account. Now, there are no restrictions on the repatriation of this once it's deposited into the bank account. So you can use it for investments into your company. You can take it out, but you do need to have that capital deposited into the bank account initially for the company set up. Um, in terms of how we can assist, we can assist with the whole process. So issuing the commercial register will be the first, the investment license will be the first process under MISA. Then we'd issue the commercial register. Once they have completed, that's when we can start looking at corporate bank accounts, office spaces, and we can help with the whole process through our team based in Dubai and in Saudi Arabia as well. For GCC nationals, it's a little bit more advantageous in terms of the paid up share capital and deposits into banks. It's not the same share capital requirements for GCC nationals. You don't have the, the millions of dirhams paid up. So it's a lot, it, there's more advantages for GCC nationals. Um, so yeah, we have a dedicated concierge team who can assist with that, with the, your corporate bank account opening. And we have, we have teams on the ground in Saudi Arabia as well to assist with all of this. Excellent. Maybe staying with you, Callum, there's a question which is more of an affirmation here is saying uh, the company that we're looking to set up in Saudi will be fully owned by a UAE company. Will it be considered a UAE owned entity? Meaning will it receive also the same benefits? 
I guess the answer to this it relates to UAE, meaning is the ownership of that entity in the UAE uh, Emirati owned or GCC owned? Will it determine whether this is also considered a GCC owned company? In the UAE, the UAE entity could be a foreign owned, and in that case, it's going to be treated as a foreign owned company in Saudi Arabia, correct? Yeah, absolutely correct. So we would need to look at the shareholders and the structure of the company in the UAE. Just because it's a registered business in the UAE does not necessarily mean it's a GCC owned company. So if the foreign shareholders will be expatriates outside of GCC and they own the company here in the UAE, that would still be considered as a, a, a foreign expatriate. So we'd need to look at the whole shareholder structure. We need to see your trade license, any share certificates to be able to advise you accordingly. But if there's any foreign expatriates involved in the shareholders, then we'll need to register through MISA. Right. Andrew is also asking a question related to the possibility of setting up an ADGM trust for ownership. Uh, yeah, that is something that can be done as well. And Alistair, in this case, is, is an expert at setting up ADGM entities. I think Andrew, uh, Alistair Andrew is our client. Maybe, Andrew, if you can get uh, in touch with Alistair, he'll help you out with the, with the ADGM solution and, and the possibilities of setting up in Saudi Arabia as well. Uh, we're getting a lot of really good questions. Some people are asking for specific opportunities for specific industries. Somebody saying, are there specific opportunities in the, in the education sector? Um, what, what else can we say in terms of activities, Alistair? You've been setting up a, a good number of companies in the last few months. What other sectors do you see good potential for, for our audience? Yeah, definitely. I think I think education is definitely uh, a sector the Saudi government are heavily investing into. Um, so, so that's definitely one. IT is absolutely booming in Saudi Arabia. I think any major IT company will attest to that, that they have presence already in the kingdom. So if you're in IT or any sort of communication technology industry, um, again, huge opportunities there. Uh, we've also seen a lot of event companies uh, setting up. We, we spoke about some of the high-profile sporting events that the Saudi government are planning to host. They, they plan to expand that even more. Um, financial services is one that, that we've seen a little bit as well. Um, healthcare, natural resources. Um, and then, of course, your standard project management consultancy-based uh, activities are, are very, very popular as well. So... Look, it, it, it's a real mix. Um, that, that's the great thing about the kingdom. There are so many op opportunities in so many vertical sectors um, that if, yeah, if you're in any of these that we've just mentioned there, please do get in touch um, and we'd be happy to sort of run through the options. Katarina is asking for fitness type of companies and fitness trading. Uh, Ahmed, is, is the industry of fitness well developed in Saudi? Do you already have a lot of existing well-established gyms, for example? We've seen a number of paddle uh, courts being set up here in the UAE. Are paddle courts set up in Saudi? What else can we say on the, on the fitness and, uh, and sports industry? Uh, for the fitness and the sports industry in Saudi Arabia, it's actually one of the attractive ones because um, just a short time ago, there was only male fitness uh, gyms, but now it is expanding and a lot of uh, females uh, gyms that has opened and I have seen a lot of companies that come in and investing and opening and creating actually a whole uh, a whole building of just uh, fitness. A lot of companies are coming in too. Uh, there was there was only only couple of ones, which is one of them is Gold Gyms, which is international. He's been uh, operating in Saudi Arabia for a long time. Um, I would say fitness trading company is a very uh, attractive activity. Uh, a lot of um, a lot. There is another boxing is good. Uh, like you said, Mr. Lorenzo Battling uh, firm. So all all. I would say it's a very good uh, activity to consider to open here in Saudi Arabia, especially that the uh, the people of Saudi Arabia and uh, foreigners that are living here they are they they are wanting more uh, places to and options to choose from to uh, to go to and uh, be be more healthy so it's it's a new lifestyle that it's uh, coming and opening uh, in Saudi Arabia and open, the people are uh, becoming more understanding about it and practicing it so now uh, i i've had a few friends of mine recently move from dubai to saudi 
And the, 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 the first question that comes into discussion is the issue of you know, relocating your family. Uh, and what is the style of life that these families can have? What can we share with the audience, Ahmed, in terms of you know, uh, expats and Western, Western families suddenly finding a new life, a new place in Saudi Arabia to call their home? What, what, what can we tell them? What is, what is it that they, they will be uh, experiencing? Expect. I would, I would say from my experience with working with a lot of expats in my previous jobs, um, I've seen them from coming to Saudi Arabia before all these changes came and now, and uh, most of them, when they came to Saudi Arabia, they looked at it, they were a little bit scared. But after coming to Saudi Arabia, I'm living after two months, you come to them and ask them, how do you find it now? And they are loving it because it is Saudi Arabia is one of the safest uh, countries uh, to live in, has a lot of option of education, international schools, British, American, Indian, Pakistani, also um, have have a very um, a lot of option of housing. You can choose from just living in a, in a regular neighborhood and with a public or living in a private uh, owned uh, housing which is um, like compounds or other, uh, other options that have, have their amenities too in that com com compound. Also uh, healthcare, like how we have mentioned before, it's very uh, great option here in Saudi Arabia. Um, <clears throat> the entertainment that came into uh, cinemas, movies, shopping uh, experiences, uh, a lot of entertainment is uh, uh, every month there is something new is going on. Uh, companies, uh, government have allowed companies to have their events. Uh, so, uh, and a lot of attraction for, uh, for family activities and children. Um, I would say it's a very great environment to come to even raise your children uh, as they are going to be open for uh, different cultures, uh, different nationalities, uh, experience a different uh, way of uh, living. Uh, from my experience, uh, I've seen people that come to Saudi Arabia and stay here for 10 and 15, 15 years. Also, they have the option of owning uh, their own house, owning a, a car for them, for family members. Um, of course, owning a house, they will, a property, they will have to have uh, the approval from the concerned uh, entities. Excellent. Uh, Callum, uh, we didn't touch much on the issue of tax and zakat. Um, what is it that investors should be expecting when it comes to taxing in Saudi Arabia? And what are, what are the different sort of uh, elements within this, this concept? Yeah, so for foreign expatriates under MISA, um, you'll be liable for corporate taxation of 20% in Saudi Arabia. Um, this will be based on the, the net income. So this is the taxation for under MISA. This um, Saudi in January last year, they actually started implementing VAT as well, which is 15% VAT on all products and services in Saudi Arabia. Um, if you want to, there's no restrictions on any dividends or repatriation of your, your net income, um, but you're likely to be liable for a 5% tax withholding fee when you do withdraw the dividends or want to transfer this money outside of the kingdom. Um, if you're a GCC national who's looking to register, you don't have the same corporate taxation. You're only liable for zakat tax um, for a GCC national, which is 2.5% of the, the net equity of your, your business as well. Um, so yeah, these, these would be the taxations. Personal income, there's, there's no personal tax at all. Um, so that is completely tax-free for all of your personal income. Excellent. I think it's important. Alistair, do we have anything to add on this topic? Are there any more regulatory um, things that one need to take care of in terms of UBOs, ultimate beneficiary ownership and ESR, sort of similar to the UAE that we're seeing in the last uh, few months? Uh, I don't think that they're, they're going as, as hard as UAE are on, on UBO declaration, but no doubt that they will. Um, I think you know, the whole region is gonna go this way, uh, but, but I think Callum summed it up pretty well. There is no personal income tax currently. The, the government, Saudi Arabian authorities have uh, uh, regularly denied 
that they are planning to introduce it. It doesn't fit in with, with Vision 2030, so we'd be surprised if anything in that respect was introduced. VAT, as Callum said, is at 15%. It will be lowered to 5% in the next five years. That is a promise from the Saudi, the Saudi government as well. Um, Zakat is there for GCC national owned companies uh, at a rate of 2.5%. Um, and, and yeah, that, 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 that's pretty much it in, in terms of taxation. Shweta is asking, Alistair, maybe I can direct this one to you as well, says, if I have to open a financial consultancy, what would be the requirement? Do we have their offshore company options to set up also for the same activity? Yeah, I mean, if, if he was to, to go and get licensed directly under MISA, I'm not sure if Shweta is a UAE national or not. If she's not, then that's the correct way we would need to go in which she would need to demonstrate she owns another company worldwide in the same industry. Um, and that company must be older than, than one year. If, um, if Shweta is a UAE national, then she can set up under uh, GCC national ownership 100% and go directly to the Ministry of Commerce to obtain a commercial registration. And that's where she wouldn't need to, to show any sort of previous company, et cetera. So it would depend on her nationality. But if Shweta would like to drop me an email, I'll be happy to walk her through the, the specific options. Maybe, Alistair, to stay with you with one more, more question, uh, what is the whole creative zone environment? If you could explain, you know, when somebody reaches out to us, uh, how we advise clients on so much more than, uh, than just a, a business license. And I think it, 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 it applies the best to the case of Saudi Arabia. When people go to Saudi, I think they need support and help in so much more than just the license itself. How can you round out this, this concept? Yeah, absolutely. I think, you know, Credit Zone, we were founded 11 years ago. We've helped over 44,000 expatriates set up their businesses here in the UAE and now in Saudi Arabia. Saudi Arabia, for a lot of people, is very much the unknown. A lot of people haven't been to Saudi, uh, don't plan to travel in the near future to Saudi. And that's, you know, really where we're, we're, we're going to offer the, the most value, I would say, initially. Um, talking about trust, when you're entering a brand new market, you need to be advised correctly. You need to be structured correctly. You need to ensure that your company is licensed as per the local laws and regulations. And Credit Zone are very well placed to assist with that. Our track record here in the UAE should attest to our our success in helping people navigate the local requirements. Taxation, we've, we've spoken about, is certainly more complex than the UAE. Again, we can add value there. And our offering here in the UAE will very much be replicated in Saudi Arabia as well. We will be helping with relocation. We will be introducing personal concierge services. We've spoken about assisting with, with, with bank accounts. Ahmed and his team are on the ground in Riyadh to assist anyone who would like to physically meet as well. So anyone that, that, that is thinking or, or, or has interacted with us previously here in the UAE will know that customer service and the customer experience is everything to us. That's why we have a referral rate of, of over 70% and one that we, we plan to continue to, to improve. So we would invite anyone to get in touch. All of our consultations are free. Always very important to point that out. And I'm sure a lot of people have a lot of questions about Saudi Arabia that we won't be able to answer today. So I implore anyone that has any, any questions, please do get in touch. Uh, we'd love to hear from you. Excellent, excellent. Maybe uh, Ahmed, let's talk a little bit about the, the timelines. Uh, what, what are we talking about in terms of how long does it take to set up either a MISA uh, company or one a GCC owned directly with the Ministry of Economy? Uh, I would say, I would say uh, it's, a, it's around uh, two to three months. Uh, will take to go through the whole process uh, and to be ready to start and operate. Um, uh, it's it's uh, usually we don't face any problems as long as the, all the documents are uh, attested. For if it's foreign, to be attested from the Saudi embassies in that country where their company is, or uh, uh, or uh, if it's if it's in the GCC, it's the same to be attested. But uh, I would say from two to three months. That's 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 a good time. Uh, to uh, set up the whole company. We have a, a viewer asking, is it, needed, is, is, is it needed any special license or permit to work with NEOM, uh, the NEOM project? Uh, there is no need of the license as long as the, your activity is uh, it's, it's needed. And uh, you can, uh, of course, NEOM has their own, own process. So you just apply to them and uh, 
if, if they, they give you the approval to operate, which is NEOM still now under construction. So it's not fully operatable, uh, operational yet. Right. But there is no special uh, license to, to, uh, to, uh, to work there. All right. I think we're slowly getting to the end of this session for today. Maybe, Callum, what, what would be your final comments to, to explain to the viewers why Saudi, what is it that they need to be considering a little bit on, 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 on the steps with your experience of the people that you have set up, what, what would you tell the audience? Yeah, so as we've discussed, I mean, the, the kingdom's vision of 2030, they're really, really pushing for lots of foreign investments. It's a great opportunity and great time to invest in Saudi Arabia. They're really trying to attract foreign expatriates in multiple different industries. Um, so now is the best, best time to, to register in terms of the booming market. Um, they're really pushing all these great initiatives for foreign expatriates. Creative Zone as a consultancy, as Alistair mentioned, we've been established for 11 years. We've got vast experience. We have a, a great team here who are, are willing to, to do our best and really help you, give you all the consultation, give you the necessary advice in terms of your registrations, um, assist you throughout the entire process, whether it's through MISA or whether you're a GCC national, we're here to help you through the whole process. Company registration, issuing the commercial register. We can help you open corporate bank accounts. We can help you find physical virtual offices in the, in the kingdom as well. Any external approvals, if required, we can do all the necessary research through our team in Saudi Arabia, through our legal team. So we can get all of this conducted prior to your registration and we'll assist with the entire, entire process. Um, so yeah, uh, if you have any questions, please feel free to reach out, email myself, Alistair Ahmed, um, and we'll definitely be more than happy to assist further with your, with your company registration. Excellent. Maybe I will ask uh, our tech team one last time to include the landing page and maybe the emails of Ahmed, Callum and Alistair. So everybody has it there in front of them. Maybe Alistair, your final thoughts for today. What is it that we can do for our clients and how we can advise them to, to set up in Saudi? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, thank you, uh, Lorenzo, for hosting such a, a great session. Thanks to everyone for, for tuning in. As, as my colleague Callum has, has correctly said, uh, really now is the time to get into Saudi Arabia. When I look at Saudi Arabia, I often compare it to the UAE maybe 20, 25 years ago before this economy uh, grew so massively. I think Saudi Arabia is on that trajectory and may even exceed the UAE in terms of its economic growth and its appeal to, to expatriates. As, as Callum's correctly said, we have 11 years of helping structuring businesses here in the UAE, both protect their assets, ring fence liabilities, and help them expand. And we can do exactly the same in Saudi Arabia. As we said, Saudi Arabia, to a lot of people, is the unknown. But through our team here and, and through Ackman and his team in Riyadh, we're on hand to advise and give you all the necessary information to structure your business uh, well. I saw a couple of questions as well about living in Saudi Arabia, about the education system. I've had family live in Riyadh. My mum and sister both lived there for a number of years. I can personally attest that Riyadh is a wonderful city to live in. They've got world-class education. They've got fantastic schools following international and British curriculum. And the social life in Saudi Arabia is also there. Please don't think that, that it's not in the compounds. As Ahmed uh, said, there's a very close-knit, tight expat communities uh, all across the country, not just in Riyadh, in, in Jeddah as well. So Saudi Arabia is only going, only going one way and, and that's upwards. There's huge opportunity and now without doubt is the time to, to get in. So I'd implore anyone to please, please get in touch. We'd love to hear from you and we look forward to helping you uh, expand into Saudi Arabia sometime soon. That's great, Alistair. Thank you for those comments. And maybe Ahmed, your final thoughts for today. What is it that you can do for our clients there while you are in Saudi? I would say uh, don't hesitate. Just get into contact with us and don't worry about the government requirement. We got this. Uh, we are all uh, established in this. We have uh, a lot of experience. Uh, it, is, it might sound scary, but it, believe me, it's not. The government have made it very easy. Uh, you will try us creative zone and you will see that we will set up your country, your uh, your business in the, in the best way that we can that you will run it for many years and you will not face any problem with any government issues excellent 
Perfect. Well, uh, thank you so much, Ahmed, Callum, and Alistair for taking the time and, and sharing your knowledge with, with the attendees. From our side at Creative Zone, we remain open to getting in touch with you, to hearing your, your questions, what else that you would like us to answer for you and help you with. You have our email addresses of, of the team and, and that landing page. If you would like to receive the full proposal and the documentation, uh, showcasing the steps and, and what is required. So thanks again to everybody, to all the attendees. We had a, about 150 people connected. Uh, we, 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 we enjoy doing these webinars and staying in touch with our client base. So thanks again to everybody, gentlemen, Ahmed, Callum, Alistair, thank you so much. And thank you all for taking uh, and being here with us on this webinar. See you on the next one. Thank you all. Great, thank you, thank you all. Thank you. Thank you all. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.